Hello everyone and welcome to a deck tech for Opus 17. This time we are referring to the Scions of the Eighth Dusk. What is the Eighth Dusk, you ask? The Eighth Dusk is something I made up because their job is the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. And I didn't want to call it that, so I call them Scions of the Eighth Dusk. Anyway, this is a Scions list. I have to give a big shout out to my friend Daniel. Perhaps you know him as Gulo too. This is really, he really came up with this list came up with the base idea. I have tweaked some things so my list isn't quite the same as his. I've moved a few things around, but I want to give a big shout out to him. This is something he conceived. He really likes it. It's been a fun treat watching him play around with it. And I've had fun with it too. So really interesting to note about this list. There's only 12 backups. So when you are playing this, you absolutely want a hard mulligan. Try to get this Sarah. She's going to be the most important one. However, it is also offset. Well, actually I'll get to that in a second. Sarah, get your princess Sarah. She can also get, I think that's it. Or she can get the Hilda as well. Hilda can be amazing if you can play her late in the game, but even if you get her early, it's fine. But usually, Sarah into Princess Sarah, or just search out another copy of Sarah for Spare CP. However, this deck kind of cheats a little bit because we have Afmao. And Afmao is one of the big ways that we help with consistency. When Afmao enters the field, you search for a card named Ofjang, add it to your hand or you search for a card named Meijing, add it to your hand. And what's great is that those are two separate auto abilities. So she's a terrible target for your opponent to Amaterasu on turn one, even if you just, you know, you go turn one off Mao. Go, they can cancel one of them, but you're going to get the other. So the reason this feels more consistent is because you have the three copies of Sarah to help you get a setup early. If you see Aph Mao early, keep that hand as well because you're happy to turn one, slam out Aph Mao, go search out the puppets for consistency and then you can curve out however you need to this isn't really big on recurring them with her action ability like on occasion i've seen daniel use it when he just doesn't really have anything better to do in my experience i've always got something good to do with the cp so it's really just there as like i guess if there's nothing else you want to do but i really use that she's just there to get you a good start that again you can run fewer backups because you have sarah you have afmao to give yourself some consistency. Uh, I will mention really quickly on Princess Sarah, if you are able to, if you have the lightning in hand, lightning CP in hand, so Sid of Clan Gully or the Ofjang of the Meijing, if you have access to lightning CP on the backup, make Princess Sarah a water forward because Thancred is a big part of this deck and the more water, for, more water characters you control, the bigger cost target he can revive when he enters the field. It is very easy to mess with Thancred on the stack I have won games actually by doing that before that Thancred will target something that's a four cost. They have exactly four water characters on the field. Okay, well on the stack, I kill one of the water forwards. Now it fizzles because it gets weaker. So it, the more you have on the backup line to support that, the better. So those are the backups. Meijing and Ofjang don't really do much that's going to matter uh, overly. Meijing can buff a forward of three or less by a thousand. Sometimes that's relevant. We do have forwards of that cost that are worth protecting, but for the most part, it's just there because it can be fetched out. Sid of Clan Gully is just here to help the burst count, which I think is at eight, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it looks like it, so not a ton of bursts, but a few. And then here's Thornton, can just be a great follow-up to Sarah, helps us search out any card. So those are the backups, standard, boring. Let's talk about the fun stuff. In particular, let's talk about the new cards we've gotten. Yeah, so mentioned Aph Mile. She is here to help give us a consistent start. You just want to jam her out turn one to help get your backup line set up. We got some new Scions, and <laughs> actually, we only got two, which are the twins, Alice and Alphano here. It just feels like we got more because they're very impactful. And we, we did get to see Stola from last set. She technically isn't this set, but no one really used it last set. You could use her with the Thancred play, but that didn't matter because there's just not enough to support it. So what the Thancred play is, you place Thancred to the field. When he enters, you pick a, you choose a forward in your break zone. If it's cost equal to or less than number of water forwards and or backups on the field, you play it on the field. And that's a key. It says backups are forwards. It does not count monsters. So there's not much of a reason to put monsters in this deck for numbers. You bring Ishtola out to the field. Ishtola can then immediately dull herself to give a category 14 forward haste and first strike. Thankard is a great target for that because when Thankard attacks, he then counts up the lightning forward and backups and he'll break an active forward that's cost is equal to it, similar to the entry. Was always kind of a neat card. Unfortunately, came out in the set with Amaterasu, so it was a lot to invest in 
there were just so many ways to fizzle it, right? You can Amaterasu him outright. You can miss drag in the break zone. You can, again, kill something on the stack to mess with the numbers. But here, it's a lot more consistent when you can get the second half of his effect that Ishtola can just give him haste by dulling herself. Because, again, otherwise you had to run something like Backup Alley, say, so that all your signs had haste. Way better here. And let's talk about the new ones, because he this is what he really helps enable. Uh, all This deck, by the way, absolutely spikes better on damage, so feel free to take plenty of damage. Alice, when she enters, you get to get back any four in your break zone other than herself. And then if you, she enters on damage three, you get an additional effect that you get back a job Scion forward other than herself in the break zone. So if she comes in on damage three, you get back two forwards as long as they're not two Alice. She is, of course, assisted by her twin, Alphano. When he enters, you get to draw two cards and then discard one, which is fine. Nothing amazing, but nothing to, you know, write home about. On damage five is when he becomes incredibly scary. When he enters the field, you choose a four of cost four or less other than himself, and you play it right to the field. So on damage five, you play Alphano. You get to bring Alice right to the field. Alice is then going to draw you two cards from your break zone. Alphano is going to draw you another two cards from your deck, and then you can just pitch any one of them. It's a, such a strong power play, not to mention if Thankard comes out, and it makes a st Ishtola so much stronger too, because when she enters, you choose a forward opponent controls, and it loses a thousand or 4,000 power for every Scion forward you control. So between Ishtola, Alice, Alphano, Thankard, yes, there's only four Scion forwards, but you don't need more than that. If she comes in with one other person, that's an 8k power reduction. With two other people, that's 12k. And then... Her special ability is incredibly relevant here, Pulse of Creation. You have to pay another copy of Ishola, pay two Lightning and dull her. She'll deal 9,000 damage to all forwards on the field other than Job Scions of the Seventh Dawn. Yes, this will kill some of your own forwards, so just be mindful of that. But it will also wipe out your opponent's board, and it just feels a little unfair when it leaves you with potentially four attackers still, some of which can have haste. Another little combo piece with this is, so you have to dole an active Scion forward to use Ishtola's ability, but then you can choose a category 14 forward to give it a haste first strike. Well, we have plenty, and we don't just have these two, we've got a couple more of those. Two copies of Oracle of Light, two copies of Leviathan Lord of the World, and two copies of Lakshmi Lady of Bliss. These are all category 14 forwards, so they can benefit from Ishtola if you need to. Usually you're going to use it on Thancred, but on occasion it can help. Oracle of Light is quite nice. She will buff your Scion forward, so Ishtola, Thancred, Alfino, Alice, she'll give them all plus 2,000, which can be incredibly relevant. And then when she dies, you can remove her from the game. As long as she went to the break zone, you can remove her from the game to play any Scion onto the field dull. Getting to play Thancred for free feels quite unfair. Because <laughs> then Thancred comes out, and then he triggers, and he brings out whoever, and et cetera, it goes on. She's always been a great little card. The only thing that's ever limited her was the fact that, one, she's light, and two, she's limited to Scions, but she really shines here. So, a couple more of our supporting cast. Lakshmi, Lady of Bliss. This is another quote-unquote consistency card because turn one, what you're looking for, what you should be mulliganing for, is either Aphmau or Sarah. But on the offhand, but if you don't happen to see those, but you do see Lakshmi, that's not a bad hand to keep. Lakshmi is a really good turn one play. You put it out immediately. The auto ability occurs in the end phase. Your opponent has no chance to Amaterasu this. Even if they had like an Atomos or a Famfrit in hand, they're still pitching three cards to get rid of her, which is exactly how much you played for. And if they don't, you just immediately start getting value back. The longer she stays on the field, you just keep drawing cards. So she's absolutely great to throw out early. Lightning and Leviathan both serve a similar purpose. They are, again, you really do want to get set up in this deck, even though you've only got 12 backups. You want to take your time. You want to be able to play everything off as much CP value that you can. Sometimes your opponent's going to get aggressive. They'll try to aggro you down, or maybe they've just got forwards that really have to be dealt with. Lightning is really good for that. Um, I, I think he might have been running three Lightning in his list. Maybe he was running two, or maybe even one. I will admit... Maybe I'm just unlucky. Lightning comes seems to come up less and less for me all the time. And it's because often when I would play her, I end up having an equal number of forwards to my opponent. So unfortunately, I'm not quite as high on this card as I was when I first saw it. However, if, again, if you're getting aggro down, if you're clearly outnumbered, she can be a great way to just outright remove something, which is very nice. Leviathan is similar. 
There aren't really great board wipes in Water and Lightning. People consider Leviathan a board wipe, and he is. He's about as close to it as you can get. He's still a little finicky. You know, when I think of a board wipe, I think of Shantoto or Susana, which has just hit the board with everything. Leviathan says, well, to be at his maximum, they need to have a backup, a monster, and a forward you want to get rid of, and then three other forwards that you want to shrink. But nonetheless, he does a good job of really putting your opponent on the back foot and bringing to bear what he can do one thing to be mindful of there's no way to like repeatedly use his power this six cost leviathan summon is the only other way in the deck to bounce something so you're not going to really get to trigger leviathan over and over again but he is a 14 card he can trigger off Estola. and again he's just there if ooh, someone's putting way too much pressure on you early i gotta slow him down so uh one copy of axis which according to daniel is the best card in the game uh, at least the best lightning card in the game. Uh, this card is still just not for me. Sorry, bud. I, I've really tried. However, he does pretty decent work here. When he enters the field, you put the top three cards of your deck into the break zone. Then you can immediately break the axis whenever you want to get a card from your break zone. It makes him an excellent defender. You can just block an attack and then force a combat trick out of him. Or if he was just going to die anyway, just swap him out for whatever you need. Great way to get extra copies of Ishtola. Maybe an extra lightning for those purposes so he's fine i think daniel does run a couple more but i had to cut him down to three sorry bud one copy of porum you can always go with the ex porum if you want to recur some of the summons i am up to i think is it yeah nine summons in this list so there are targets this porum again is really just in there for troublesome cards so against something like a barrett in avalanche it's really nice that when they go to combat boom you turn the barrett off and no one has haste really good uh they have an orphan that's going to make you discard you turn the orphan off awesome don't worry super much if porum gets the counters to become super powerful not terrible if you get there but this isn't a twin strategy by any means it's just there to deal with problem forwards that have abilities that are very crucial to turn off kuja is an interesting one kuja i think is actually more relevant now than he was when he came out i really was never high on this card when he came out but things have gotten cheaper and cheaper look at porum he stole access all these cards that are three cost and less so kuja actually has a lot more relevant targets now than he did when he first debuted and in particular if your opponents are smart which we were when we were testing this deck with daniel kuja wasn't really in here but what we would do we knew how strong this deck was on damage five with the elfino trigger so we only put him to damage four. Kuja gives you a way to deal yourself damage, which is very nice and can be really key when you turn yourself on from damage four to five. I've seen it. I've seen it done so many times, and it really does put in work. Thundaga is unfortunately, and it's it was never great. And man, looking at it by modern standards, it's such a crappy special. But who knows? On occasion, maybe it'll be relevant there. Something I put in this list that Daniel did not is Behemoth King reason I like good old BK here is because you can have it your way. No, just kidding. It's just a generically good lightning beater. And again, you kind of want to get to five damage on this deck. You really are okay with Alphano spiking. So Alphano bringing in Alice, doing the big combo. Here comes Thancred. Now maybe you have enough to have five. You can bring a Behemoth King in for free. You're on damage five. He can immediately attack. He's dealing two points of guaranteed damage. I like this card a lot. Daniel does not run him in his deck. I will show you some of the alternatives he runs, but this is one you can take out if you wish, but I just really like this card, especially because, again, I'm going to be going to damage five anyway, right? Summon choices are always very flexible, but what we're going with, two copies of Ixion. In case your opponent, again, tries to swarm you, this deck does want to take its time, get set up. Hopefully they're running a bunch of two and three costs, and Ixion can just break them out right. Ramu is pretty nice. It can take out two blockers. You can dull one. You can deal 7k to another active one. Uh, you can also break monsters, which are, you know, still pretty relevant. Things like Atomos, Biblos can be running around. So he's really good against those cards. On occasion, he can be used to give a lightning forward haste as well. He can freely give it to Behemoth King without the Behemoth King penalty applying. Give it to Ishtola, Thancred. I don't normally use it for that purpose in this deck, just because there are other ways to gain the haste, but... It's what it is. Sildra, just one copy. Again, kind of fitting in with that consistency theme. You don't see your Sarahs. You don't see Aphma. You don't see Locks from me. But hey, you see a Sildra. Go search out one of your starter pieces. Grab the Sarah and the Thoradin. Grab Sarah and the Lightning. What do you know? They're coming aggressive at you. Whatever you need. However you see it best, 
Soldier is there to help you. And Leviathan. I actually put this in after watching someone use a, a similar deck idea on Octagon. And the burst was just so relevant. Since it can recur any water forward in your break zone, getting back the Alphano to just replay, especially if you're on damage 5, was just so strong. And again, on a burst, this card's just absurd. You don't really want to ever hard cast it, but it does give you a way to trigger Leviathan. It does give you a way to clear a blocker at instant speed. If there's a Viera Fenenis or another lighter dark card that's really troubling you, you can just send it right to the bottom, make it gone forever, put it on the top, hit it into damage. Just a fun little card. I've enjoyed using it, and you're always happy when it hits that bang on Octagon. So, that is the core of the deck. I'm going to show you a couple alternatives. Rydia was a big one. Uh, Rydia is really nice in that you can search out two summons, and then your opponent gets to pick which one you keep. So you can search out Sildra and Leviathan, Sildra and Ixion, and you're basically telling them, hey, what do you want to do? The reason I didn't originally put this in is because I didn't physically own any copies of this card, and I was trying to build it in real life. And also her on summon cast too, where you can lower for its powers. Very nice. Still, eh, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I just think Behemoth King's better. Maybe that's just me. So I opted for that, but Rydia is absolutely a choice you can make instead. You could always run something like Uriange. I've seen certain lists that lean way more into the 14 aspect. I don't think this list has enough 14 cards to make Uriange consistent enough. Uh, I let's see if it gives us the category count down here. Yeah, we have 20, which is, is two fifths of the deck. You know, not terrible, but this he only digs too deep. So I don't know. You could always put him out as another scion, but again, uh, this isn't like Ida or Old Ishtola, the Earth one, where you really want a mass level of scions. You really don't need that actually in this deck. So unless you want to lean way more into the 14 cards, I would leave Urianje out of it. Something that Daniel also originally had in his list was the monster, Tros. Uh, he just had him as a one of. It was another way to trigger Leviathan, and then if they did bounce, you can draw a card. It does kind of work well with the Leviathan summon as well. I just personally didn't feel like it fit well enough to do what I wanted. I would much rather have Behemoth King in there, so I swapped him out for a copy of that. But those are some tech choices you could make quite fun i'm hoping they will release more signs in the future and they really seem them seem to want them to be in lightning and water it seems the lightning earth days are far gone which is a bit sad because at its core that'll always be kind of one of my favorite decks decks possibly my my favorite deck I, that was just my starter one and you know i knew the characters and it was so fun but hey we've got lightning water here to stay let me know what you think Give it a shot. See how much fun it is to use these cards together together, and just the kind of value that can explode out of nowhere is absolutely awesome. If you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Feel free to give me a like and subscribe. And if you're interested, you can donate to my Patreon. If you like what you see, I appreciate it very kindly. And hey, if you don't like what you see, I appreciate you watching nonetheless. Have a great day. And until next time, take care.